Good morning, folks. Sometimes when you have three kids, you're up all night and the news comes out late. However, that means you should have had a chance to watch last night's special video. More on that as we close, but first, we're at spaceweathernews.com and we find the last 24 hours on our star were eruption happy. Filament off the north we saw starting to erupt yesterday, and then at the end, off the south. Let's watch the coronal bursting with those events here in 211 angstroms. By the way, these are not aimed our way or are extremely small. 211 angstroms is also the best way to view coronal holes, by the way. We're going to run through those eruptions in 304 angstroms as well to see the filaments more prominently. And we're actually going to replay that first eruption off the north here so you can notice the electric surge into the northern filament that caused it to erupt. We've seen the papers, but you don't need peer review when the sun shows it that plainly. Only other space weather note is the geomagnetic activity triggered by the coronal hole stream in the solar wind. It has hit a respectable speed but took two days to get there, which is enough for our field to adjust and avoid a geomagnetic storm. We're starting off the articles with a new tool. This is the drought page from NOAA and they have an incredible number of products updated every single day others weekly. But either way, this is a great way to gauge short and long-term moisture trends, and the link to this page of pretty tools is in your link list below the video today. Up next, we're heading out to Andromeda for a view like we've never seen before. Alma has scoped our sister galaxy and found a ring hiding in plain sight. This ring is where the majority of star formation is occurring and is a definitively new way to see our cosmic neighbor. Up next, my ever-present wag of the finger to such definitive statements without observing physics. One of the key black hole paradigms is in major trouble after key observations, so what did they do? Made a model that shows what they want and declared the problem doesn't exist. Sadly, models are not observations and things come out every day that need to be included in the models, like this one. If that's not in the models for magnetic balding of black holes, that previous paper we saw is useless. Hint it's not in that model. Folks, we've got them shifting the day ahead once again. Fastest day predicted to be faster again and a day later, and this is about the stage where we are one or two days away from that data wipe like the last three times. Eyes on this today and tomorrow. Now last but not least, boy you need to be a very sharp observer to get this one. Guess what, when a star's magnetic field begins to change, it begins to change its spin rate. This is not only good astrophysics, it's telling of ways to monitor for the most extreme solar effect of the galactic magnetic reversal. And when it comes to changing magnetic fields and spin rate of a sphere, I'd say we've done a bit of that for Earth as well, haven't we? Speaking of things we've covered in catastrophism, last night was postlude number two. The first one was back in March and was six months post book release. It's now four months since that postlude, and so much has come out that we needed to update again. And folks, our version of the disaster is now virtually complete, with our friends at NASA and various universities wanting me to deliver to you a very special message at the end of that video. So observers, you do need to see it. We greatly appreciate your support. Instead of wind maps, we have multiple shots of our star to close so you can get those multiple views of the eruptions. Subscribe and we'll do this all again tomorrow right here, but right now at 6.30 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.